am not. I think we have, we have been rid of an extremely dangerous demagogue who lived by hatred of others and prejudice and who, and who committed treason by saying that the United States deserved the attack upon it and its civil society hey, in September he, 2001 by other, by other religious nutcases like himself. He profoundly and repeatedly apologized, and I, I'm sure you're perfect not in enough. your life. No, I'm, I'm sure you're perfect enough, in your life enough. and that you've never made any mistakes. I've never, I've never committed treason like that. I don't believe in the sincerity of his well, let's apology. Look at, let's look at the thoughtlessness and the mean-spiritedness of your very remarks that you've made about Reverend Falwell. By all means. You think it's a pity that there isn't a hell for him to go to, you yes, said. Yes, I do. On his death, you write, the discovery of the carcass of Reverend Falwell and the floor of his obscure office is you know, almost zero significance except for perhaps two ga categories of, of people, etc. Uh, you, well you also say the evil he did will live after him. Yes. Jerry, Sla Jerry Falwell slaughtered nobody in his life. He mm -hmm. may have misspoke once or twice, but he devoted his life to his religion. Do you have nothing good to say about him at all? No, I, I repeat, um, Jerry Falwell lived on uh, hatred and superstition and bigotry. He, he preached dislike of people whose lives he knew nothing about. He raised money from credulous well, You don't know anything about his life. Now, excuse me, sir. You can either ask me on and have, uh, ask my opinion, or you may not. But I don't have to be here if you're going to take that attitude. Well, you could leave. You spent the first half by saying I had no right to the opinion you'd ask me on to express. Now, you're tiring me out. I repeat that. No, what I said is your opinion was thoughtless. What you wrote was crude and mean and hateful. That's yes, and what I said. You took up all the time for my answer with your long, rather unlettered question. Oh, okay. Jerry Falwell just oh. made, a, made a career out of sponsoring dislike and superstition, said that people he didn't like were going to hell, said the United States deserved to be attacked by Islamic fascists, said he believed that people would be raptured into heaven, leaving all the rest of us to wallow behind, I, I think his death is a, is a deliverance. And if you say that someone who occasionally John. makes a charitable donation is a good person, then you have to say that Hamas and Hezbollah, how, how, who do all this charitable giving how and dare charitable organizing, are, are the same to be buried a in a dancing mass performance in Times Square. should be wiped physically from the map with all its people. Yeah. He says the United States is a satanic power. Uh, his, his members of his government, named members of his He's government, have been caught, have been caught sponsoring sir. death squads. He's lied. He's yeah. lied to the European Union about his nuclear program. But you know that a lot he of... He says he believes the Messiah is about to come back. Who's looking for a war here? So does George Bush, by President the way. Bush has said... I'm not, that's not facetious. You... That's not facetious. Your audience, which will clap apparently anything, is frivolous. Um, no, I, I'm just, I'm just uh, saying... Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying that... I've, I've, I've been on the John Stewart show, I've been on your show, I've seen you make about five George Bush IQ jokes per night. And there's no one I know who can't do it. You know what I think? This is now the joke that stupid people laugh at. It's a joke that any dumb person can laugh at because they think, they think they're, they're smarter, they, they could prove they're smarter than the president. Like the people who make booing and mooing noises in your audience. But, but sometimes it's a... None of whom, none but, of whom, none of whom was smarter than the president. But sometimes a cigar is really a cigar. Makes me long for a newer, more cranky pope who's going to walk the, the walk the beat and swing the nightstick more. I, I mean, yeah. well, I, I completely, I completely second those who were just applauding. But unfortunately, it didn't break his heart when you found out. He knew that Cardinal Bernard Law was moving around uh, sadistic predators. <clears throat> concealing their activities from the police, which it was his job to disclose, uh, inflicting them on parishes where he knew they would uh, attack again, and covering up for them. This is one of the gravest crimes in the calendar. This is the sort of crime that would make an atheist fear he was going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. It's the one thing no one can tolerate. Now, Cardinal Law, uh, who should be facing trial in Boston, is instead a fugitive from justice in Rome, given a special sinecure, and a, a, a place of refuge by His Holiness the Pope. He can't get out of that. That's wickedness. Mm -hmm. It's also, in my view, wickedness to say that condoms are more nasty and more dangerous than the AIDS virus, which was the Pope's official position. It's lucky for him that he isn't going to face uh, judgment, because if he did, he'd have a lot of people's deaths on his conscience, as well as the rape and torture of a lot of children. These are things I wouldn't want to have to go to my grave with, even if I was sure there was no afterlife. And no one will say this this week. It's well, all piety. It's all pope all the time. And what about when you say man of peace? This is the guy who invited Saddam Hussein's chief henchman to the Vatican a couple of weeks before Saddam was removed. 
and fawned on him and called him a man of peace. That's Tarek Aziz, another wanted torturer and mass murderer. This is a pretty grim record. Well, Chris, you better hope so or you're going to hell if not. <laughs> well, uh, all, the most, all the most amusing people seem to be bound the same way. <laughs> <laughs> These achievements are real. There are four, four reasons for which a state, previously sovereign, may lose its sovereignty, may be deemed to be outside the law. They are four. I'll recite them quickly. One, violations of the Genocide Convention, which we have signed. And by the way, by all means, let's impose this on Sudan. And by all means, let's impose it on them for Darfur and on China for many other offences too. Because just as China has backed Saddam Hussein, and just as it backs Robert Mugabe, and just as it's backed uh, the worst elements uh, in Burma, so it has been behind many of our woes in um, the Middle East. So that's the first thing. The Genocide Convention may not be violated. We've signed it. It mandates that you must move to punish or prevent genocide. Second. A regime loses its sovereignty if it violates the Non-Proliferation Treaty. Iraq has used weapons of mass destruction on its own territory and on the territory of others. Third, you may uh, lose your sovereignty if you give aid, comfort and harbour to international terrorist groups. Iraq is multiply convicted of this. And fourth, for occupying and invading the territory of other nations, which Iraq had done several times, continued to do and was intending to do again. This is not, unfortunately, uh, the case with all the despots we'd like to get rid of. The cheap point that Peter ends with saying, if, you can, if you're going to do Saddam Hussein, don't you have to do anybody, must reach the critical standard I've just mentioned. The four great offences, repeated, flagrant, gross and intentional, and, in, and going to be repeated, all of them again. It was essential that we move Iraq and the region into a post-Saddam Hussein era and the, the woes that have fallen upon us, the second thoughts we're bound to have, the worries uh, about the, the blunders that we made while doing it, none of which I would deny and some of which I know more about than you could dare to know. I know things about what went wrong that would curl your hair. Still, none of these can impeach the idea that we did it not too soon, but much too late, and that only therein lies our shame. Thank you.